This is December 19th, 1976. Mm, uh, was the word. And the word was a voice so noble and grand, beckoning to me from the garden of love. It called to me and anointed unto uh, my thought and force the redeeming grace of my illumination so that I may give succor to a race of humanity blinded by the Pharisees and the ignorance of all religions to seek and to obey the equality of all the life from the oppressed to the oppressor. It spoke in grand terms of love and devotion and anointed me with the sound of the purple shadows of all of light, the light of illumination of the spirit, not the light of the world or of the heart, but in the sound of expression it so knighted me, and in the remembrance of that noble expression, the voice proclaimed in the hush of that twilight that J was the joy of expression of spirit. E was the energy encompassed in our universal life. S was the sincerity of birth and rebirth. And you was the unity in all of the endeavors of true life. S was the salvation that speaks in the words of love to those that seek the fullness of their God expression. C was the Christianity of anointed force. And H was the happiness born of the seed and the egg. R was the religion of all that is bound together in the form of infinite expression and love. I was infinitive in finite form. S was the sincerity that is expressed in all of the land. And T was above all the truth shines in that purple shadow known as the full belief that each expression of life is touched by the gentle hands of all the creation. So Jesus Christ, born not in a manger, but in the stable where there was not the room in the inn. Jesus, who was seen magnified in the galaxy stars where the shepherds followed the ray of light that was the beckoning to us the purple shadows that had anointed in my righteousness redeem my humanity into the fullness of truth and life's true expression for the word is expression in all that is expressed, all that is ever known. And so from the garden of love, I burst forth into the womb of life's expression. And Mary and Joseph were not my father, not my mother, not my parents in the unity of seed and age. I was the expression that was sired by the king of kings and by the mother nature that surrounds and encompasses all of the fullness of that life. I assumed a body of symmetry, perfect in all its perfection, blessed and anointed, by my acceptance that though I would not be accepted by the multitudes, I would leave upon the face of mankind the undeniable and undisputable facts that truth 
is the grace under which all energy flows. And it is said that throughout all history that it is to worship the good, the God, in spirit and in the truth. So let the waters of all of the creations flow from the mighty river of the redeeming factors of love and let love reign the supreme in the total expression of all compassion. Jesus, I want to thank you. And I want to ask you first regarding your, your coming here, whether we are talking with the Christ spirit or the Christ force. When Krishna came in one time, he said, oh, this is not the Krishna force, it is the Krishna spirit. So it seems there's a difference between these two. And I wonder whether we were right feeling that you are the Christ spirit. I am the Christ spirit, the God for us, the expression of all humanity, the expression of all nature. Christ for us is the flows of energies that vibrate through all of nature. And if you but hearken in your hearing, you see and hear the full expression of those creative waves that cause the force to be the spirit. I see. Uh, when we were talking before, you spoke of um, giving the, us the story of your life, the childhood and youth, in a form that will carry the spiritual message to the children of today, something that would be expressed simply in the terms for the children. Uh, I was what we were sort of, we were hoping that perhaps uh, you will give us this story. The force of all the childhood shall be known unto you in a Bible for children, for it is a complete revision, a complete expression again of that which is known as the innocence of childhood. But tragically, it is suppressed by the materialism and structure of parent that lives within the fears and the anxieties and limitations of the senses of body rather than the senses of creation. I see. Then, then you are going to tell us the story of your life in, in these terms for the children. In the, your forthcoming dialogues of life, so shall we do that which you request. But let us first answer the questions that have come unto you through Krishna for us, through the depth of your compassion, so that we may clear away the debris of doubt and misgiving that causes the individuals of life not to see the beauty and vision of all creation. Oh, uh, well, uh, now, um, Dr. Fisher said that he would bring into us the teachers that you had in your earth life, and let us talk with the teachers that you had. Would you tell us their names, or will Fisher just bring them in? I would not be true if I spoke for my teachers. No. So in the course of your dialogues, you will speak to the teachers personally, so that you may weave a web of truth. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when the Buddhist scripture says that we should free ourselves of desire, how do we interpret this? Desire is only the expression of all past lifetimes. For it is in truth, within the confines of your Bible, written by the St. Jerome of the earth, that all in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. The mansions express each lifetime in the process of enlightenment. So each desire is a single channel 
of a lifetime expressed from the past. Each desire should be fulfilled so the desire can be not removed, but balanced in the full enlightenment of your own spirit. Then in the past lifetimes that, uh, for example, that uh, if things that have been incompleted that I have not that in my own lifetimes I did not finish or did not uh, well achieve, then these are the things which I should now fulfill. These are the desires of your incompleteness. It is not judged by any creative force. For you and yourself are the judge of your own expression. And it is in the neutral expressions of life, not in the good and evil thereof, but in the goodness of self. And through the desire is the word appreciation that you boldly accept the balance of that desire so that you may attain the Godhead for which you seek. Oh, now you have spoken before of uh, saying the solar system uh, of us is uh, one quarter, the solar system is one quarter of all infinitude, yet it is, but it's speck or a sign in the hands of time. But we did not understand that. Well, the soul of all the galaxies of all expression, and notice the word expression, is the true fullness of all creativity, for to express is to know the joy of life. So often shall this word be used in its totality of purpose in relationship to creativity. In the soul expression or solar conditions of life, we speak of that sheath of the spirit, the energy source, which allows your world to understand the force of electricity, to understand and utilize that which is not understood, but used in its fullness. It is only the generator that is in compatibility with all of the galaxies. Well, I must remind you that in your limitations, you see not the vision of suns beyond suns, nor moons beyond moons. And in the unlimited expression of your light, then you will see what is meant by the soul warmth that pervades and invades your planet. I see, thank you. Now, Vishnu has said that drugs are not to be used to defeat the death pain. Uh, what is the function, a purpose of the death pain that people have suffered when they've been uh, leaving the body? It is the rejection of truth, sincerity, and desire. For all is thought and thought form. And the suffering is the fear of that transitional phase from one illuminated vibration to another. For the purpose of drugs is not to dispel, not to fragment the psychical force. They are only for the use of nature. A man needs no drug. Only that drug of illumination that allows him the freedom of his total expression. Well, Vishnu said that the use of drugs to defeat the death pain, to stop the pain of those who are, are dying, uh, brings karma upon the doctors who do it. I wonder why it is wrong to give the drugs. For uh, the drugs are but a deadening force upon the full energy of the individual involved where there is pure thought, where there is true illumination, there is the fulfillment of desire, then and only then, there is no pain. For pain is the incompleteness of the truth. Oh, I see. You have said, in the past, you have said that the word progression is not good. You said it was weak and it's not uh, and intimidating. When we speak of the progression 
vibrations of the vi of the electrical vibrations are extending from the earth level through to the outermost ring. And I wonder how we should look at this matter of this division into bands of the electrical energies from the finite to infinitude. We speak of them as being divided into bands, seven bands with vacuums between them. And I don't. Uh, they are not divided, but united. And you must see your planet as a school. And each creative endeavor is but one grade toward uh, the laws of the Vishnu. But the vacuum between the, the energies is the school, the grade, the expression of that individual. So it is wise to see the expressions of life in the grades of life and not structure them to a progression of being. Each person moves from one level of understanding to another level. This is a, his progress. Rather than that, that each individual that goes. According to the word of understanding, yet it suffers the judgments and the dual expression of life that hinders the idea that all the laws are combined and it is not functioning in one but all, yet limited to one where there is not the full truths represented in the illumination of all creation. Think of the seventh progression. What is the meaning of that? Only to use its title for the sake of expression of words, but more in the understanding that the seventh progression is the purple light of all full creative illumination. Then uh, we attain then in the final development of us, unfoldment of ourselves and of our own God for us, we attain this condition of the seventh progression. We attain the complete Godhead of purple lights that are reflected upon all of the universes beyond your understanding. It is an acceptance thereof in the heart and the mind of the individual to flow with the fullness of life and not restrict it by misunderstanding and judgment. Now, when I felt the entrance of God for us, was this a gift of grace to me from you that I was allowed to feel the fullness of that, which I have not attained in that permanent way? It was your own gift of full acceptance that you as an individual with a name had passed from the limitations of criticism and judgment into the full acceptance of the creative force that surrounds you. Oh, I see. Now, you had a statement about the seven immutable laws of Vishnu. That originally there were twelve. Then said, but in the process of life, man distorted and ruined his capabilities to enter all the dimensions of life, thus defeating his purpose of free expression of spiritual nature, and in that process became the victim of the karmic laws which now operate in your figure seven. And I wonder if you could expand a little on that nature of the original 12. The original 12 is what you understand is the horoscope of uh, your uh, astrological galaxies and how they affect the life and lives of all individuals. Beyond compassion, the full seventh law, there was and is the fullness and humility and humbleness of that life, which has been displayed and shown throughout the traditions of all of those that seek the truth and the servitude of that life. Thus we find beyond compassion the full five celestial expressions that have been in recession because of the limitation of man, we found that truth, that justice, 
that mercy, salvation, and illumination were no more in the fullness of creation. Thus man in his acceptance of free will recedes into the limitation of his seven. For in the seventh expression of life, there is the total acceptance that all the thoughts of mankind are what control the destiny of uh, your plan. You project to us, of course, in your personality as Jesus of Nazareth, as a man, as a male. Could you equally project as a female? All creation is not separate unto itself, for it could not exist in separation. For I was male and female. I was a feminine and a feminine. I was the expression of totality of all creation. When you accept that separateness of purpose, it is to deny your heritage of the oneness of all of life, which has been expressed so many times in all of the words that are not understood by the force of a mankind. Thus, it is to say from comic expressions that all can accept their roles as male, all can accept their role as a female. But it is not to look at it in the separation of force, but rather combining it into that oneness of purpose and giving acceptance to the energy form of a self. And the Christ spirit then is neither female nor female. No, it is not, for it is neutral in the force of all creation. Yet there is male and female that must obey the laws of procreation to enhance the multitudinous flow of life and to prophesy and to forecast the full meaning of nature and its grandeur. Now, speaking of prophecy, Jesus, in the Vishnu dialogues and in others that talk about seeing wonders in the sky, I noticed that the book of the Acts, St. Peter quotes the prophet Joel as saying, I will also show wonders on the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and a vapor of smoke. I wonder how why it happens that that the Vishnu force, the Vishnu coming in and dialogues with us, has made a prophecy that repeats the prophecy of Joel. For until mankind sees the wonders of the earth around him, until he sees beyond the material shadows of his illusion into the creative energy that broadcasts all images and likeness thereof of goodness, then he will not see the illumination and wonders of the sky. But first he must respect the holocaust of nature, which can dampen the enthusiasm of mankind. For in herself, it is the mighty force of the mother God giving expression to live quietly upon the earth and to understand the full reasoning of knowing oneself in its fullest form. Thus, there is the wonders of the universe that must be seen and has been quoted that unless you cannot believe the earthly things, you cannot believe the heavenly things. I understand that. Oh. In talking with Krishna at different times, I wondered, because of the similarity of spirit, I wondered whether you, whether the Krishna of that um, King Granate in India and the Jesus of Nazareth were actually both creations of your spirit. Are these two really incarnations of your spirit? Or are they separate entirely? They are diversified spirit, but from the same oneness. And each diversification speaks to the understanding of all individuals 
where they only give acceptance to their limitation. So it requires all schools of thought and of soul expression before the illumination of Godhead is understood. I see. In a book by Marcelo Crabber, it was said, it was said that Herod the king slaughtered his two sons who had plotted against him and 300 of their friends and that this was the origin of the story of the slaughter of the baby which never took place uh, is this scholar correct in saying that he is erroneous for he is not the illumination of spiritual purpose it is but a myth and should be disregarded from the way of truth you mean this story that it was his story is a myth that is a myth. I see. Uh, I see. That, 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 then, that, then there was the slaughter of the little babies. That did take place. That the Herod did order the killing of all the babies. But only for the enlightenment that he needed. And many of the lives suffer for the sake of illuminating one in the multitudes of all life. Well... I don't quite understand then why Herod ordered the killing of the babies. But he was fearful of the change of the spiritual renaissance of that century or time. And thus in his fear wanted to hold his power of greed over the multitudes. I see. Now, with this group that we have at the Church of the Renaissance, there with Michael Rataza and uh, where I have been now, is that group, feel that this group is going to succeed and grow and uh, come into a fullness of, of spiritual truth? He is blessed by my hand and the God force, yet it still must lose its fear its materialism, its structure, and seek the flow of freedom, of total expression toward all things spiritual, which shall be the illumination as the signs of the heaven shall be broadcast upon your world in future days. So in the peace and the joy and the love of life, let there always be every moment filled to the acceptance thereof that each desire is but an expression of the hope that springs eternal throughout the human system. Know your place, know your way, and in the silence of your thought, the vision comes to release you from the pain of limitation. Till then, my blessing to you and all that is yours.